What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and of course, it's a Wealth Wednesday. So my partner, Stacey Tisdale, is here. Happy Wealth Wednesday, everybody. We are going way up with a queen today. Mm-hmm. Shade Muhammad is here. She is the Chief Marketing Officer of Time. By the way, amazing event. I actually Thank was you. at your Closers event the other day. And when I tell you, I'm glad I came out the house. Yes, because <laughs> it's so that hard. Means a lot. And yeah. you looked amazing. Thank you. I was. It was such a great room to be in. When I tell you next year, I'm going to talk to you about all the connections that I made. Wow. Well, I was I there. Love like to hear that. Literally the next day, um, just some of the people that I was able to connect with at an event, and that's why I always tell people networking is still working, but is in a, such a nice environment and such a great place. Um, and to see you being honored too, mm. you know, Shade, for the work that you've been doing. So let's talk about who you are first before we get into the closers event. And okay. especially, you are the chief marketing officer at Time, but she is the first. CMO that time has ever named. Yeah. So the fact that they made that move, the fact that they did it with a black woman, that is something, girl. Tell us about that. And to see the numbers, yeah. I how know. that's reflected in yeah. once you've been brought on as a chief this marketing officer. This is old officer. school legacy media. Yeah, yeah, no. And I like people ask me a lot why I'm in sort of like magazine, and you know, it's like it's it's seen as a traditional medium, and it is, but. The impact that you just talked about that you can have, what it means to be on a cover, what it, the connections you can make and how you can grow your career by having a, a, a placement, a story, a feature. So I just love creating that opportunity for people, and especially for us. Mm -hmm. So there's just um, there's just there's the opportunities are endless. No, I know journalism's in your blood. Yes. Your aunt worked at the Daily News. She did, Dolores that, Thompson. That's kind of what planted the bug. And you were a journalist. I know we both worked at Black Enterprise. Yeah, yeah, I was a freelance writer, yeah. Yeah, and you were at Forbes and in a different role. Yeah. And your dad's an author, too, by yes. the way. Over yes, overtime. Really? Yeah, I was hanging with daddy. Okay. Daddy's cool. Go, go pick I it up. Exactly, you know, exactly. We but, all are. <laughs> but I love what I've heard you say on a podcast, and it's um, kind of what like where Wealth Wednesdays came from, yeah. you were able to see that even though you're a journalist and you might do great stories, the people who really have the power are in the business suites. Absolutely. Because they make the decision of what stories get out and when gets when they get out. And you said, I have to go here to make real impact. Not easy for a black woman. Tell us about that. Not easy. I mean, yeah. I mean, when you look at, you know, journalism and you look at sort of the gatekeepers, mm -hmm. right? Um, there, There's not many of us. Period. And so I could see that when I wanted to, if you're thinking about the stories you want to pitch, sometimes you had to explain why they matter. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I'm like, hmm, this is going to take a while to explain, you know, why it's important to cover these things. So I said, OK, I see that on the business side, these business execs really are making the calls or can influence sort of what gets airtime in quotes right and so I said could I make more impact being on the business side and influencing what shows up in the magazine what shows up online in real life at events all that kind of thing that's important because you came from Forbes before this yes and I know what a big deal it is to be able to get a write-up in Forbes yeah. and to have that representation exactly. as journalists you know there's people who work at Forbes who have profiled me and some of my you know friends who are also entrepreneurs and I know that can really help yeah. when it comes to highlighting your business and making sure that people even know it exists but then also making sure people go and bring in some revenue it really does impact <laughs> we're gonna keep using this word impact, impact it please does, it, people directly no absolutely I mean that's what I saw especially at Forbes when I saw 30 Under 30 and saw what that did for a young person's career mm -hmm. to say they made that list, to say that to be in those rooms, it is literally life changing. You got a 30 Under 30, too. I, well, a, a different, a one, different, yeah. a different yeah. one. I was like, can, one. I, can I apply? And they were like, nah, you, you can't apply. So I'm like, all right. Now you um, can. <laughs> now I'm not on 30. So, yeah. so but yeah, I think um, that that's what I love most about it, right? Is like someone's life can literally change yeah. by getting a write up. And so, it's that piece and then it's the connections that you're talking about when you're in the rooms and to be at a time event means something. You feel comfortable. You feel like anybody who's here is at a certain level. I can work with them. So you're able to kind of break down those walls and really start to just build together because I think that's what I want to see is I see a lot from my vantage point of a lot of activity 
but it's mm-hmm. like how do we bring it together and start working together you see your imprint already the closers list yeah yeah and just the makeup i think Issa Rae was on it close cory yep. booker Aurora was on James. it john yep. o'brien, john O'Brien. Real, yep. a lot of people of color there yeah mm-hmm. and you see your women of the year list the diversity there you have coco goff you have taraji yeah so talk about the statement that you're trying to make with the diversity you're putting on these lists for the art for audiences and for the media yeah so I mean I'm not on the editorial side so I'm not the person who could say you know you could have a cover I wish but we have an incredible you know editor-in-chief Sam Jacobs and um, I can with the closers that came from Impact House something that we did in Martha's Vineyard last year that was all about how do we create an ecosystem around black entrepreneurs and so from that I was able to meet someone there who was on the stage who had an idea for a list and so we sort of, you know, brainstormed and tried to figure it out. And then we were able, I was able to bring that to our editor in chief and our CEO, Jess Sibley, and they loved it. So I think when it happens organically, when you can sort of put the pieces together and for people to see it live, that's why I love an event because you can see and feel that energy. It allows you to see like, this is a real community. This is a real audience. And, uh, and there's, there's like no limit to what can happen when you just give people a platform. And let's talk about what the closes are for people who may not yes. know about this closes list and about closing this racial wealth gap. Yes. Explain to everybody what the closes list actually is. Yeah. So it is um, 18 black leaders. Um, and it was really important that everyone on that list be black mm-hmm. um, who are closing the racial wealth gap. And so what that means, the, the black, white racial wealth gap. And so we all know that the, the stats are you know incredible about how many years and generations it will take to do that. Um, and it's a lot that we're up against. And so the opportunity there was to say, I, I want everybody to look at it and say, oh, time's talking about that? Oh, wow. You know, because that means something when we can say we're bringing attention to this issue at a time when a lot of people are rolling back. Yeah. A lot of companies are saying, don't say black, mm-hmm. you know. And so I think it was important for us to to step out and say, no, this is an important topic and um, to bring it to life with a cover, with an event and really saying this is not just, you know, sort of a, a blip, but we're bringing light to this issue. And it's very diverse to the different fields that we're touching on here. Yeah. You know, it's healthcare, it's entertainment, it's sports, policy, it's policy making. Yeah. Um, it's even the, take fair, a village. the the exactly. founders of yeah. the Fearless Fund. Yep. Yeah. You know, that was really important to me in particular because this fund has helped so many uh, black and brown women with their businesses, but they're getting they're under uh, attack. Yeah, they're under attack, which is I don't even understand how that's possible. Yeah, under As, discrimin- yeah. for discrimination. Yeah. And when you, I'm so glad you said that about the Frillers Fund because mm-hmm. they've invested over 44 million dollars, I believe, in black businesses. And what you're saying about DEI being rolled back. Yeah. From your vantage point, what's going on? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a. I think with George Floyd, right? There was a clear message of we're putting a lot of money towards this issue, towards making sure we right the wrongs and we create opportunity for black people. And I think what you're seeing is the opposite of that and yeah. folks coming in and wanting to, to to roll all of it back. And so there's an attack on folks who are coming out front and saying, yes, we are working on this issue. But I think it takes lists like Time the Closers. That's just one piece but it takes lists like that to say we're paying attention we're still here we're still behind the people who are doing this work so you know because what what sometimes what is happens is they want everybody to stay quiet right and then things can just go through go fall yeah. off go away so i think that's why it's like it's so much more than a list it's like it's saying we are documenting this issue that's really important yeah. how um there seems like a disconnect between legacy anything and these old arguments that we're hearing about, you know, the wealth gap and all yeah. these terrible things in the black community versus Gen Z mm. and Alpha. It's almost like they're in a different world. You had more black investors invest in the stock market yes. than any other group in the last three years. Mm-hmm. Again, you have black women as the fastest and biggest group of entrepreneurs in the United States. Mm-hmm. And I get approached With to the be, least amount of funding. Yeah, right. Okay. That part. <laughs> I get approached to be in mainstream media all the time. They don't want to talk about that. Mm. They don't want to talk about those these new wonderful things. What do you think about that? And also, how is time 
going to reach these young people? Yeah, I mean, I think part of it is saying we're here and we see you and creating that opportunity for community to be built because young people, they want to be a part of it. So when mm -hmm. they see, oh, you you get it. Um, but I would do it like this. Like I would love I would love everybody to come to me and say that because that's how you change and evolve. And so I was given the opportunity to do that in my career. Um, you know, our, our CEO, Jess Sibley, was the one who sort of I've worked with her for the past 10 years. And anytime I raised my hand and said, this doesn't make sense. I want to do it like this. You say, OK, go ahead, <laughs> do it. So and you said people can't believe that they can't believe that. And she also said in her speech that you inspire her and you're her mentor. Oh my god, which I think is important because that's what it should be like, right? Because you have a different experience and a different lens that you're bringing to her that she may not view life the same way that you're able to view it from. Yeah, and you've brought a lot to the table also, though, when you look at the numbers too, because we all know numbers don't lie. They don't. So when it comes to the reach that that time has had with you in that position, it really does show. You know, we think about DEI and people think that means putting unqualified people in positions, right. but that's not what that means. That means giving qualified people the positions that they may not otherwise have had the opportunity to get. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what something like everyone seeing the closers and Impact House and what we did with Latino leaders. We're not talking about anything less than a, at all. Mm -hmm. We're talking about people who deserve to be in this room more right. than anybody else. And just haven't sometimes had the chance. More. Sometimes, sometimes more. more. Because we see a lot of mediocre there. people yeah. with no melanin getting these positions because they know somebody or exactly. they're related or uh, whatever it is. But why not put somebody qualified? And then you see the value that it brings when you're reaching different audiences. Because exactly. just like, and you guys had Aurora James as one of the closers yep, yep. with the 15% pledge. 15% of the population is black. Why not have these brands on the shelves? And people really did sign up yep. in order to yep. have 15 percent of their shelf space dedicated to black owned brands yeah and that's what i hope this list does too right is to motivate somebody to say like oh next year i want to make that list so mm -hmm. how what can i do how can i you know just create something that could get me on that list because that's motivating too right to mm -hmm. see like there's somebody who's paying a time is paying attention to this I'm going to I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to go hard to figure out how I fit into this story as well. So that's something her, you know, Aurora creating something specific like the 15 percent pledge that could happen in every industry. Right. The work that Pronghorn is doing in DSMs and what they're doing in spirits and how that can be expounded upon. So I think that's what's important, too, is people seeing if I do this work. Mm -hmm someone's going to notice. It doesn't have to be a thankless exactly. <laughs> job because a lot of things we do, we feel like, well, it's a lot of work. We get no credit for it. So does anybody notice? And you just mentioned Pronghorn. Yeah. So talk about that partnership because yeah. it was a full black bar yeah. at like this event also. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. All, hashtag all black bar. And the room just felt very, um, it felt like it was for the culture. And that was, <laughs> that was done was intentionally. Like yes, that was done intentionally. But um, Pronghorn <laughs> is, I mean, they're less than two years old and they already have dozens and dozens of brands under their portfolio, um, women owned brands, you know, all black owned. And what they're doing is incredible because what they're saying is when you want to create opportunity, it starts from in their perspective, from the bartender mm -hmm. to the supplier, like all of those people along that chain have to be bought into this is important. And that's so much of what we're all up against is everybody along that chain has to care or has to see the value. Right. And there's so many people on that chain that maybe when you start out, you don't see. So I love how they're taking it from bird's eye view and saying, we're going to do this in this industry, but this can be replicated mm -hmm. throughout others. So um, I love what they're doing. It, it was an all black bar. And um, yeah, it's, it's just really incredible work. And so, not to throw myself in it, but my coffee company, we're so yes. intentional about that, too, because even from our importer to our roaster, black women, you know, and we were very intentional so on making important. sure, but like super amazing, qualified black women who are in those positions that we're blessed to be working with. Even when we built out our coffee shop, we made sure every single person was a person of color that had a hand yes. in building that shop. And so I think um, it, that's why this whole fearless fun thing has me so I, like, Correct. I don't even, 
I yeah. don't, I, like I want to make sure we're aware of that and we know what can we even do to make sure that we're supporting the work of the fearless fund because I think of like businesses they've helped like Slutty Vegan yep. and Pinky Cole she Pinky was there, there. yeah she was <laughs> I'm just thinking about things like that it, um, and the importance of making sure that because we don't get the VC funding that other groups of people get even though we are starting our businesses it makes it a lot more difficult but to see that we have resources the main thing for us is we need to be in those positions to absolutely. fund our own too absolutely and that's why the work that yeah Arian and Ayana yeah. are doing is, is incredible because they have our back right in rooms that we're not in and so that's often who's who's under attack the people who see that whole supply chain yeah and just so people know what's going on with Fearless Fund yeah. they are being sued for discrimination by the same group that brought this all up with the Supreme Court and affirmative action this summer. So now they're being forced to use a lot of their funding, a crazy amount of their funding, to fight lawsuits. And an even bigger issue for them, they were just about to get another round, another series of funding for their own fund. And that's all been held up all because of this lawsuit. Like imagine saying we don't want to help black women who are underserved when it comes to funding and we're going to actually put a stop to it and hurt the and calling the, it discrimination. Right. And that's how you see how much money, how important dollars are because they're pooling dollars and they're under attack. And so that just shows you that's where the tar that's that's who has a target on their back. And so that's why we tried to make the focus of this list economic because it's, yes, it's a social justice issue. Yes, all of these things. Mm -hmm. But at the root of it, it's it's economic. The Power Network did an event about a week and a half ago at Carnegie Hall. Yeah. And there was a total who's who of black leaders. Reverend Al Sharpton was there. Mark Morial was there. Robert Smith was there. And I was just struck by everybody was talking about DEI mm. and AI. Yes. And particularly yes. how the black community has to prepare themselves skills wise yeah. mm -hmm. to get jobs in AI, learn about AI, and then that bigger question of us not having broadband access. Yeah. And how all of these are, I just saw the, all of these leaders, all of these organizations like the Urban League, they are fully going guns blaring on the DEI issue and on the AI issue. Yeah, it's important. We just launched last year um, Time 100 AI for the first time. Mm -hmm. And that was one of our most popular issues because everybody is talking about AI. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally. And so you, I really got to see anybody who, you know, was sort of in the last phase of the tech disruption, they are talking about AI and they have a solution, they have a product, they're out front with it. So it is so important for us to educate ourselves about how we can interact or just at least make your everyday easier by using AI. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just, you know, just really getting into it. I'm like, I just saved myself three hours, right? <laughs> but it's like, you have to really, we have to educate ourselves because this is the next frontier. Whether or not you like it, don't be scared of it. Yeah, and don't be, be scared against and do it, it yeah. anyway. Yeah, you have to get in, dig into it because yeah. it's happening. It's happening. Yeah. It's when there's so yeah. much money being funneled towards AI and, you know, we can't, we can't miss this one. We, <laughs> yeah. can't. we yeah. cannot. And yeah. jobs, even these machines, they're run by people. Correct. So getting the skills to run these machines. You mentioned your dad was an accountant. Yes. You might think, I'm an accountant. What could I have to do with AI? But those those skills and that knowledge are also valuable to it, the technology companies that have to build this. And that was a big emphasis. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, what, what I've learned in learning more about these companies is that there's always a need for a thinker, a strategist. And so bringing your mm -hmm. expertise and your, the, your culture, your approach to your lens of the world is enough to figure out how can we influence what someone else who doesn't look like me, how they're creating the products that they're creating. Um, because there is a real opportunity there where we could get left out. Um, and so I think you, we have to know that we're qualified. Right. You know, and I think that's why like a list like the closers and the people on this list are important because they're also going to be the ones that are making sure there's programs that exist that also target our our communities yes. to make sure we are involved. One of the other people you honored was from the 10,000 um, interns. 
yeah interns um program yeah. interns foundation how have internships been uh crucial for you for what you do now oh i mean major so i have wanted to be in media since i was 15 and like i said my aunt who worked at the new york daily news she was secretary in the sports department she saw that and took me to the national association of black journalists convention and abj, and ABJ every year that'll do it and uh, that'll do it <laughs> and then when i was 17 i joined um the emma bowen foundation which creates opportunities internships for um black and brown students and so I interned at um, 6ABC in Philly for three summers when I was starting when I was 17. That changed that changed everything, mm-hmm. literally. And I'm on the board of Emma Bowen Foundation now. I literally have to give a special shout out to Shonda Rice, um, who I remember talking to in my Syracuse dorm. And I was like, oh, this Syracuse? lady, this lady not playing. <laughs> yeah. So it was like just that that opportunity for high expectations. Um when someone is able to, in your industry, is able to set a very high expectation for you and what they expect of you, Mm -hmm. that can change everything. And then to create the opportunity for you to flourish. So internships have literally changed my life and changed my career um, because we don't don't necessarily get the opportunity to, because I've been watching how people do it for 15 plus years. And so that allows me to say, okay, I like this piece. I don't like that part. What can I take? And, you know, so it's allowed me to take a step back. And when you're in the room and you don't have to perform, before you have to perform, it takes that um, pressure off. That pressure off. Yeah. And you can really be creative and, and grow. And you saw that. You know, yeah. the financial aspect of internships is interesting to me, too, because I remember when I was interning, it was all unpaid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Uh, there's yeah. a lot of paid internships. Yeah. I made $10 an hour. And my brother, who's in finance, is like, you made what? <laughs> but think about, right? Like, yeah. People who have yeah. the access yeah. to be able to work for free or move somewhere else exactly. and have housing to be able to do an internship that can help with their future versus people who are like, well, I still have to work over the summer exactly. to be able to you know pay for things and support mm-hmm. my education yeah. so I can't necessarily do an unpaid internship even though it would be so beneficial and I have to go back home because I won't make enough money to be able to go get my own place yep. you know that's something too that's a huge thing so the the great thing about Emma Bowen was that we were paid and then we got a matching scholarship wow yeah so like when I tell <laughs> you this changed our lives that's amazing it changed our lives and that's the piece that you know and because I became a page at, um, at NBC part of the NBC page program when I when I um, graduated and that was also you know you had to have support so it's tough yeah <laughs> it, it, I know it, right it, yeah. it's really oh, it's know. really tough when I tell people how much I made they're like what I made, listen I made nothing yeah. Okay. yeah I had to pay to get to work yeah yeah no, <laughs> no literally awesome. yeah yeah I had to pay, I, 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 pay for my transportation and I just I, I live at home with, I, I live with yeah. my grandparents in mm-hmm. you know Washington Heights and um, that's what I had to do because you, you don't, you have to be, you have to work six days a week. You have to be there from morning till night. Like there's no, it's, it's like, where are you? Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and Sade, I want to know for you just growing up, how you grew up with your dad as an accountant. Yeah. How are you yeah. with, how have you been with money? Like what's been your relationship um, with money and I, finances I, I and could, planning? I, I have room for improvement. You what? <laughs> I have room for improvement. I have room. All, I'm a financial <laughs> expert and I have room for improvement. Just make, make peace with that. So I'm here to oh, make peace with that. Man. Make peace with that. No, but it's, it's, it's just being in the environment where you have exposure to the concepts Mm -hmm. is super important and I think even if you know because because being in media and that's not a career where you come out killing at all (laughs) you know so that was you know a piece for me but I still feel like exposure to the concepts is so important even if you don't I was you know more of the humanities you know media Mm -hmm. journalism so I wasn't sort of that math mind necessarily but um so I kind of shied away from it But I still had exposure. So I think that's just important. Even if, you know, someone's not a math genius as a kid, everybody needs exposure to the concepts about what it can do for you, what the opportunities it can create. It's not just about the dollars or a spreadsheet. It's like this is you create opportunity for yourself right. when you make these sorts of decisions. So then there's the whole X factor of money. We were talking a little yeah. bit about mm-hmm. that in the green room. We want to get in your head a little yeah. bit. Still, you're talking about your internships and your mentors and yeah. your early career and everything. But now you're the CMO of Time Magazine. Talk about the mindset a little bit that that takes because a lot mm. of people in our community, we know the things we're supposed to do. We know that there's supposed to be these things. But like, for example... 
um, Working Mother Media did a study. 80% of black women plan to leave corporate America because of the mental health toll. Yeah. They're having to assimilate. Yeah. Their, you know, just the depression of that yeah. constant mi- micro- microaggression. You could not have avoided that. Yeah, How course. did you still maintain your sense of self? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, good mentors, like, within the organization. And then just, like you said, that, that sense of self and not being willing to compromise you know who I was um and there are places where I felt like that I had to do that and I left and so you know I always say go where you're celebrated not tolerated and that's so important awesome because message mm-hmm. you cannot it it doesn't work if you can't show up to a place of work and feel like you can speak up or be yourself and there are very much so environments that are like that 90 percent of people of color feel like they can't be their authentic selves in the workplace yeah and it's something we have to really, really look at. And so I'm hoping that someone sees me and says, oh, she's wearing she's wearing her hair in braids. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like she, you know, and says like, OK, maybe I could maybe I could do that, too, because I don't have the answers for how we fix it. But I think just every person who says I'm going to just be me and I hope and then it has to be good enough. And if it's not, it's not because we're literally killing ourselves. Right. By trying to be someone different by trying to show up in a way that we think will appease and I've gotten I've gotten tons of you know negative feedback as well and just being willing to say okay you know (laughs) and that's hard Mm -hmm. but um I think it's 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 part of it but I, I wish it were easier I really wish it were easier for us you know, along those lines, how were you approached about being the first ever named CMO of Time Magazine? Yeah, yeah. Tell me how that happened, that conversation. Yeah. Was it something that you were pushing for? or Not at all. Okay. Not at all. Um, you got this job without pushing for it? Correct. Let me take some. It's, <laughs> all, it's, all, it's all our CEO, Jessica Sibley. <laughs> so we worked together for um, many years at Forbes. And so what happened was I wasn't on her team, but we were in a meeting. We were in a client meeting. And it was a big, our biggest account. And um, I remember her passing me notes. This is the first time we really interacted. <laughs> she was like trying to pass me notes of what to say next. And I'm looking at the sheet like, I got this. And so after that meeting, she, I think she was like, oh, okay. You do got this. You do, yeah, you do got this. So she's like, okay. So at that point, she had her eye on me. And then I just tried, I was everywhere. I tried to do everything. I was coming from being a page, coming from being an intern. So I'm like, I want to do all of it. I want to go to the event. I want to go behind. I want to create. I mean, I, I brought Emma Bowen Foundation in. I created this platform for nonprofits. Like, I was just everywhere trying to do everything. And so I think I learned a lot about the business very quickly and where mm-hmm. there was opportunity. And, um, you know, there was a part, a transition period um, at Forbes where I was, I need to figure out what to do next. And she said, tell me what you want to do. And so I pitched about six different roles and I ended up landing on, um, you know, pitching this head of DEI, head yeah. of representation and inclusion practice. I love that title and, you had. Uh, thank you. Yeah. And um, I first didn't want to pitch it because I'm like, okay, I'm going to be the the DEI, the black DEI lady. But then I was like, you know what? If I'm going to be here, I have to do this. Right. You know? And so um, we worked on that together. We built that together. And a lot of it, I was so scared because I'm like, you mean I can do this? And she's like, just do it you know and so I think I started to build up that confidence of like my ideas are good I know how to execute I know how to do this I know how to do that and so she was able to see um I, I was allowed that opportunity to to create something real um and so when she got the when she got the role as, as CEO of time um I remember I was devastated when she left and she called me two weeks later and said I want you to be CMO Ooh. I said, you want me to be what? <laughs> um, oh, gosh. And, and, that and gets there chills. Was, and, and, you know, and it took, I had that, you know, that imposter syndrome of, like, me, you know? And so I've I've had to work through that. But um, now I, I think now I see, like, I loved reason. what you just said. I was afraid. Yeah. And you did it anyway Absolutely. and that's where confidence comes from mm-hmm. your willingness to be scared your yeah. willingness to do things when it doesn't it's not going to feel great we all have oh, to it feels uh, horrible pop, but there's something on the other side but also yeah. pitching ideas because yeah. sometimes we can talk ourselves out of doing that you have a great idea and you're like i don't know if this is how they're going to feel but you never know what things you can morph know. into 
I'm good for pitching an idea. I'll yeah. pitch. I'll pitch. An idea. <laughs> We're journalists. <laughs> man. That's all we got. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and not being afraid of no, right? Like most of the Please. times, I've heard no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that's just the nature right, yeah. of being in this space or just being a human being. So I think being unafraid, hearing no, is is not an indictment on you or your idea, um, but allow it to like. How can I refine this? How can I get to a yes? Maybe it's here. Maybe it's not. But. Um, I think just being unafraid of the no has helped too. Do you feel, did you feel extra scrutiny? I remember I was always one of the few financial journalists who actually ever walked down, worked on Wall Street. Yes. Yet when I get to these media networks, there was a meeting. There would be meetings about, well, does she really know what she's talking about? And my airtime would be held up while these managers who knew nothing about you know, these things we're discussing if I was qualified. I'm the only one, you know, I invested $90 million a day on Wall Street. I'm the only one who had that background, but tremendous scrutiny. Yeah, yeah. And that's just, that's very, just, it holds you back. Yeah, I mean, I think for any of us, I, I think we've all experienced that the assumption is you're going to be underestimated, mm-hmm. period. They're going, you know, someone somewhere is going to think, how did you, you know? And so I think that's part of where the imposter syndrome comes in, right? Because you're like, I know someone's thinking this. But then the next thing is, it doesn't matter. They're wrong. They're wrong. Yeah. Yeah. They're wrong. Yeah. No, how did you feel after the dinner? After the closing? Oh, my god! It was honestly, let me just tell y'all. Like, she it keeps was, talking about it. It was so, <laughs> when you see the people that were in this room, and I know the pictures are all available. Yes. You know, and, and to have so many of the closes that you guys chose. I mean, Issa Rae you know, even spoke. Cory Booker spoke. They were just, John Hope Bryant yep. gave a speech that people stood up yes. and gave him a standing <laughs> ovation for. And so, and um, just seeing the impact that you had, even that night, how did you feel? I felt like I see it now. Like, it's possible because what I've wanted to create mm-hmm. and why I'm in media and entertainment is because of what we talked about. Having a platform changes hearts and minds of people who are in the community and outside. And so I think seeing everybody in that room being themselves, a lot of the feedback was like, no one was trying to, you know, outdo another everyone just felt like they could be themselves yeah everybody i was sitting right by ariana huffington was at the table yes. yeah I met her in person yeah and like she's before truth. and yeah. i'm telling you that's she's the... like tell me who you are what are you? I yeah, was like, yeah. Hi, I'm... she's so sweet she's so sweet <laughs> and that's the magic of a time event is that there are people from all different areas who just feel humble to be there and just want to figure out how can we build together and so i think after that i felt like you know, my work is nowhere near done, but in this little moment, my work here is done. But I'm I feel available like there's, next there's going to be some great stories that come from this I of people so. that were like, oh, I met such and such that night. I think I have a few. So once, yes! once we lock in some things. <laughs> I hey, love Jeff, it. But no, honestly, I feel like, like you must have started like 10 companies that night. <laughs> I <laughs> love to wouldn't hear surprise it. me at all. Yeah, no, but honestly, I mean, look, Pinky is there and we have something exciting that we're doing. So it was so I didn't even know she was in town. You know, so the next day we actually finished up our deal the very next morning that we were working on. So for me, it was like just a great experience to to be there. I felt like it was a celebration and I was like, this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. And we need to create more spaces like that. So that is something that you got to make sure you just keep going. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. I'll RSVP now. Tell our sponsors. (laughs) I'm available next year. Okay, absolutely. They definitely saw the impact from that. But I do want to thank you so much, you know, and and we want to commend you on the work that you've been doing at Time just because, just tell us where Time is now because I know you guys talked about it that night, but with Time Magazine, uh, where the magazine is now, the paywalls taken down, just give us. Absolutely, absolutely. So everyone everyone thinks of Time, they think of Time Magazine. Mm -hmm. We're actually called called time just just time because there are so many products so we have the print magazine um we also obviously have you know the digital time.com and one of the things that the first things that just sibley did was she removed the paywall from time so that anyone anywhere could access 
real journalism mm. and balanced information. So that was incredible. We also have Time Studios. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a lot of works that, that we've done that you, you've definitely yeah, seen that you I didn't not, realize. Yeah, that you may not know is Time. So we have Time for Kids, which is an incredible platform. Um, obviously, our events platform. So there's so many ways. There's so many ways to engage with us and, um, and to build. And one of the things that we've created is this opportunity every month to talk about a big, you know, sort of event. So it's either Time 100 AI, Time 100 Climate, The Closers, Impact House, Time 100, Time 100 Next, literally every 30 days. Mm -hmm. um, but that allows us to, because we're time, we can talk about anything, mm -hmm. but that allows us to say, we want you to partner with us in these really um, focused ways that allow you to tell your unique story um, on a platform like Time. And we can do that in in so many ways now. Wow. Well, we need that. We need that real journalism, yes. especially now. There's so much out there that is like, how do you sift through everything? But it's good to know there's responsible reporting that's going on also. Absolutely. All right. All right. Well, Shade Muhammad, Chief Marketing Officer of Time. Where can people find you, follow you, stalk you? At, at Shade.K.Muhammad on Instagram. That's pretty much the platform that I'm yep. on. Okay. Yeah, so and yeah. you got your parents. You know, I met yeah. your parents that night, too. So that was amazing. No, and yeah, and they're, my dad's in the room now. Um, yeah, my parents are literally the reason that I'm able to, to do all of this. And they have always, always, always encouraged my dreams. Even, most of the time when I did not believe in myself. Um, so, yeah, I owe them everything. Excellent. Okay, love to see it. I know they're so proud of you. Well, so, thank you. Thank you for having us. I and made it. I'm on way up. Great. And, and, yes. I made it. Shade's on way up. <laughs> I know. Thank you. And you were talking so much about mindset and everything, and yeah. I just wanted to share that I'm launching a new platform yes. next week, StacyTisdale.com, and it's all about <laughs> mindset. We talk about that so much, but people really don't know how to do it. Like, what do I do with those feelings of imposter syndrome? Yeah. How do I get through that? What do I do with all this? shame I have around debt those are the things that are going to change your financial outcomes yeah. you, you were talking about finding your own confidence in the workplace yeah. and for example women negotiated about one percent the rate that men do for their salaries, which ends up costing them over about $800,000 for the life of a career. It's, real. it's like mm -hmm. going in, seeing the messages that you're telling yourself, learning how to rewrite those. We're going to do this in community, stacytisdale.com, to get everybody on their feet. When you just go to the platform and sign up, you get a free one-on-one -on -one credit counseling session with the National Foundation of Credit Counseling. And I also created an e-journal that will help us really get into those obstacles that are blocking your path to financial freedom. You can find Safe Spaces with Stacey Tisdale on Amazon.com. Angela's got her copy and holding it up. It's a money mindset journal. It's a money mindset journal. But I everybody, the platform's launching next week, StaceyTisdale.com. My first live guest, the one and only Ash Cash. Who will soon be followed by Angela Yee yes, indeed. and Shade Muhammad. Okay. <laughs> Definitely. But thank you so much for letting me do that. And everybody check out StaceyTisdale.com. Thank okay. you, Angela. Thank you. It's thank a Well you. the Wednesday. That's what we do. Way up.